California was once covered with over two million, million acres of what we would call temperate rainforest. And now, in less than 100 years, it's been reduced to about 4%, and only a fraction of that being protected right now. So the controversy is around what will happen to these ancient trees that have evolved over thousands of years. The ancient redwoods were so large that they created their own atmosphere. There was a constant uh, moisture and fog that fed the tops of these trees. And now that they have been cut to the point where they are now, where you have little fragments and screens along roadways for tourists, these trees are dying out because they can no longer get the moisture to the top of their, tr their trunks any, any longer. So uh, in some ways, some of us even question whether redwoods as an ecosystem will survive at all. These forests have survived floods and fires over the centuries and have been able to resist one catastrophe after another. But the one thing that uh, the, f the forest has been unable to resist is basically the chainsaw. Don't trees, once you cut them down, don't they just grow up again? Well, that, that's been the argument. They say for every tree they cut down, they replant five, but what they're replanting is tree farms. It's like planting rows of corn, and they're saying, you know, that owls like, like this one can live in that, and that's ridiculous. It's like tearing down someone's, you know, 20 room mansion and putting up a couple of poles and a tarp and saying, here, it's the same home you had before. People think that it doesn't affect them, like people from the city, but it does because of this. The less trees there are, the more uh, erratic climate we're going to have, which we're seeing right now with these floods and extreme cold, extreme hot. It relates to the trees. The, the trees take in carbon dioxide and, and give off oxygen. What do you say to the person uh, who doesn't live in California, who says, so what? I'd say to the person that lives in Missouri, go out and defend your hickory forests. And I'd say to the person that lives in Colorado, go out and defend your aspen forests. And I'd say to everybody, anybody everywhere, this country was once covered with forests. The forests are the lungs of our planet. And we can't be going out ripping off the lungs from the planet to make payments on pickup trucks or to pay Harry Merlo $7 million. And who's Harry Merlo? Harry Merlo is the um, chief executive officer of Louisiana Pacific. And Louisiana Pacific are the people who are logging the old growth forest? That's right. They're logging the old growth, they're logging the, the second growth, the third growth, the fourth growth, and the tan oak and madrone. But who are the terrorists? Those are the dead bodies right there. Aha. Uh -huh. Redwood corpses. Yeah. When are we going to do this? Well, we have to make the target. Some of those people over there are saying that you guys are murderers, that you're murdering trees. Do you think of yourself as a murderer? No. Like I said before, we're just like harvesting your garden. Mm -hmm. It's just like we're doing now. And the trees are our garden. The trees are our garden. Which the, uh, we plant them and cut them. Yeah, that's what everybody here is for, is yeah. sustained yield so that the timber industry can stay in business and we can continue to use our renewable resource. And who's going to pay for the people who are out of jobs? Who's going to help I don't them? Think, uh, I don't think damaging our biosphere is worth jobs. I think employment so should be... So you're saying be, to hell with the people who work? I, I'm not saying to hell with them. Oh, I, I think, think it's are. time for them to that's look for other work. Uh, when there's no work, more work in the woods. And who woods. the hell's going to pay their bills when they're looking for this other work? Uh, I think a lot of unemployed employed people have dealt with this kind of problem. You're going to be unemployed in the timber industry if you keep going at the same rate, regardless. There's going to be less jobs in the timber industry, regardless. How do you keep these people's jobs without them having to be unemployed and do what you want to do? What is I, it that you want to do? Well, I would, I would like to support any interests that uh, strengthen our environment they want to and shut maintain down it. All commercial log equipment. No, that's I, just what they're after. That, They've that's said it not. dozens of times on TV. It shut down commercial I log. They want to see another tree fall. That is mm -hmm. sensationalism. Hey, I've heard it on TV with my that's own two what, ears. You, you shouldn't believe that's everything. All you, guys you, you shouldn't believe everything you see on well, television. It comes from the leaders Every, of your group. The, the leaders of my. I'm not part of a group. I'm an independent. Well, <laughs> I only support similar interests that other good. environmentalists have on what's good for our environment. Come back, you ever a park issue? I have a wooden house. 
<laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It's an absurd world that we live in, isn't it? It's kind of nuts. It's communist almost now. Yeah. What does the horse have to say about all this? Here's what he thinks it hurts first. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about here is the straightforward pillage of the environment, just like the Amazon. You know, once you cut it down to a level, it's gone. Once you start taking every scraggy tree off, which is you know, about as thick as my arm, you know, you've run down the resource, you've degraded the resource. With that degradation comes a big buck for the uh, owner and a short-term job for the working person. Same thing in the Amazon, you know. You burn off the forest, you take out the big rich trees, burn off the rest, get a subsidy from the government to make pasture, to, to grow beef, and it's gone. A whole way of livelihood's gone. It doesn't come back. We're just learning about the ecological damage that's being caused by destroying forests. And in this instance, the American temperate rainforest. How can the government be so stupid to allow such a thing to happen? Governments do the harm they can and the good that they must. This is a clear cut. This is US Forest Service land. This is the experimental forest. Uh, the, uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the experiment is, except to see how much we can make a desert out of the land. This right here is just bone dry. There's no water here at all. It's just everything is just totally dry. And 75 feet in that direction, as soon as you get under the canopy, everything is totally moist. The ground is moist. The air is moist. The trees are, are moist. There's a stream running through there. If that stream were on the clear cut, it would be dry right now. How a man can come here and think that he is so self-righteous that he can just take it away in a few moments, uh, I find it totally amazing. They're 2,000 years old. What else on this earth is 2,000 years old? What else can stand around? A redwood can stand around for 2,000 years, and their roots aren't even very deep, but they go out for a, an acre this way, and they stand together. United they stand, divided they fall. Incredible. They're ancient. They're like dragons or whales. Are they every bit as valuable as whales? Every bit and more. I mean, every creature has its, has its intrinsic value, and every creature should be allowed to exist. It's too bad that man only cares about what happens to man. We don't care about the other creatures. But even beyond that, whales aren't necessary to man's existence. But these are. So in a sense, as we kill the old growth, we kill ourselves. And once it's all gone, then we'll soon be gone. <laughs>